What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the Thomas Gallery and today I want to talk about probably got a code. I want to talk about the scientific method. Now, people are probably very familiar with this term scientific method. We probably heard about it in high school and science classes. We hear about the five five steps of the scientific method and what they mean. Well, I actually broke down I broke down what it meant what they mean and how they really apply and I want to come from a different uh, I want to add another one to this book right here <clears throat> now we've all heard of the five steps of the scientific problem solving method right well when I was in high school my science teacher Mr. Bryant shout out to Mr. Bryant from H.D. Woodson Senior High School the Tower of Power, the original Tower of Power. In his class, he talked about the scientific problem solving method. But he added, I don't know if he did or you know, or if someone else he knows added it, but he it, it was added, an uh, extra step was added. And this extra step is actually very crucial and I and because it's so crucial, I don't really understand why it's not mentioned more when you speak about the scientific problem solving method right now first thing you gotta know is well what are the methods in the first place what are they well the first method is simply to identify the problem you know what is the problem what is the issue you know what is, what what task do we have in front of us right that simply means you know you, you see something you've never seen before it's obviously an issue because you can't solve it. So you say, okay, this is an issue. Like, you know, how... And keep, keep in mind, keep in mind, before I go into that, keep in mind. When I say scientific problem-solving method, a lot of people actually misunderstand those words. Just because the word science is used does not always mean you're talking about physics or chemistry, so forth and so on. I've stated in videos a while ago that the word science simply means knowledge, okay? It comes from the Latin scientia and it means knowledge. It does not mean chemistry, it does not mean biology. The word actually means knowledge, okay? And knowledge is simply acquired information, okay? Now, so you say the, sci the scientific scientific no like I said science so when you go outside and you and you have car problems let's say, let's say you got car problems you got a flat tire for instance say you got a flat tire the first thing you do actually is identify the problem I have a flat tire okay now you after you've identified the problem okay you the second step is to gather information or gather data or background research. Background research or gathering information simply means you are collecting information on the problem to see what what specifically is the issue. Okay? So let's say you got a flat tire. Let's just you let's say you got a flat tire, but you look at the hole and you want to know, okay, what object made this particular puncture in the tire in the tire to make it flat okay and you gather information you get okay what what hole the hole that you see can it be identified and how you identify you look at you look at other instances other scenarios where from other you know flat tires and say okay this looks like this this particular puncture looks similar to this so what may have flattened my tire could have been glass. I don't know, a thick piece of glass because of the puncture was like this. And you collect data, you collect information. You collect all the information that you possibly can to get this. Now, once you have gone past the second step of collecting information, you now go to the third step, which is simply form a hypothesis. Now, the word hypothesis simply means an educated guess. You don't have the information, you don't have no full information, 
However, to the best of your knowledge, and to the best of the, for the information that is given, to the best of your knowledge, this is the guess that you have arrived to, to which you have arrived. Okay? You say, okay, I think that it was a nail. It looks like a glass, but I think it was a nail that punctured my tire. Okay, you took an educated guess. Based on information you have, it could either be a piece of glass or a nail. Okay? Out of all information that you gathered, that's what you come up with. Those two hypotheses. Hi yeah, hypothesis. Okay? So you, so you form a hypothesis. Now, what you do, what you simply do now is that you test. You test your hypothesis. You see if well, from, from the things around you. You look around you and say, okay, I think it's either I think it's either nail or glass. Let me see. Let me get a nail that looks like that looks like it is close to the it's close in diameter to the hole. Okay? Or let me get a piece of glass and see if it can kind of fit, like if, if it makes if it fits right in. So you test it. Alright? You experiment. Then you observe. You say, okay, I did this, I did this, I did this. This didn't work, this did work. So maybe if I try this, let me see if it works. Now, that's the fourth step. Now, here's the added fifth step that my teacher gave to me that is actually very important. Very important. And without this particular step, what you may consider a science or a law in science or a proven fact or a truth, quote unquote. If you do not do this particular step, everything you speak about is null and void okay here it is here's the fifth in my personal opinion the most important step here we go remember I'm gonna do a recap excuse me the first step is to identify the problem what is the issue what's the problem okay the second step you collect information you collect data you do background research you collect information on it right the third step is you form a hypothesis you make an educated guess okay the fourth, the, the yeah, the fourth step is you test your hypothesis. All right, you got the information. You've you've identified the problem. You collected all the information. You are now forming your answers based off the information. Now you are testing to see if your hypothesis is correct. Okay. Now here's the fifth step. Here's the unspoken step. Once you have tested your hypothesis. What you should do now is test it again. That's the key part. You test the, you test the hypothesis again. Why? Because you want to know if this happens every single time. You want to know that. Let's say you want to take let's, let's just talk about gravity. Talk about gravity. Let's, let's, let's go there. Let's go there. Let's really dive into it and go there. Gravity. You want to know if two objects of different size and weights can fall at the same rate. So what do you do? You get two objects that are in different size and weight. And you put them on an equal height. You put them at an equal height. Okay, and then you drop it. You drop them. You let them go. You let them go. You let them drop to the floor or the ground. And then you observe. You look. You observe to see which which thing hit this at the same time. Okay. You know what? We're gonna try it right now. Let's do this. I'm gonna take two things that do not weigh the same at a different size, and I'm gonna drop them in the camera, and I want you to see. If you can see them fall at the sa at the same time, okay? Right. Let's go. Let's let's find something. Let's find something. Uh. All right. Here we go. We got a tea bag, and we got one of my sketchbooks. They're obviously different size, and they're obviously different weights. Right. 
Now, what I said was we're going to test it. We're going to see if I've dropped these at the same height that they 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 should when they, when this when this comes into view of the camera, it should come down. It should be at the same place, right? You ready? Let's try it. We're going to drop it out of here. Let it go same time. All right. Three, two, one. Now, what I said, you test the hypothesis. Now, what we do is we test it again. So, take the same tea bag, same sketchbook, put it at the same height or even higher height or lower height. Either one don't matter. You change some variables to see if you get the same result. Let's change the variables. Let's, let's make it. Let's make it right here, low lower. Let's see if it falls at the same rate again. All right, three, two. One. Now, you can rewind this and you can pause it at certain points to see if it fell at the same rate. Right? And once you have done that, once you are satisfied in your testing of the hypothesis, the sixth step comes now. You draw your conclusion. Alright? You make your claim. Or you and you record your claim. You record it to you know for testing. Now, once you do that, once you do that, you've gone now you've gone through the six I, people say five, I say six steps of the scientific problem solving method. Alright? Now, once you've done that, you can test it, test it again. Others can test it. And if others can test it, that's also an important part about science. It's if if you are doing what you say you're doing, if you're doing it correctly, then others should be able to do the same experiment and get the same result. If that's not if that's not the case, it's, it's not it's not it's not well known. It's not a fact because no matter no matter who does this experiment, no matter who does this experiment, it doesn't matter who does the dropping at the same rate experiment. No matter who does it. If you do it, then you should get to you should get to the same answer I got. Okay. Now you can change some variables. Like if you were to go in out of space, then it changes. Or if you were to take the air out of a room, then it changes. Okay. So that's basically it for the scientific problem solving method. Just want to drop that on y'all one time. Hope y'all enjoy it. Peace.